Hello and welcome everyone to this session on dengue and its anesthetic implications. My name is Dr. Janvi and today we will be discussing about writing a long answer question or a short answer question that you may get on this topic. Now this is not a very frequently asked topic, dengue, malaria, but however if they want to ask you something in uh, paper 4, like they want to throw you a googly, they will suddenly ask some medical condition that you've forgotten years ago, like an infectious disease and they will expect you to write everything about the epidemiology of dengue, about the pathophysiology, about how does it affect the entire body. And what exactly happens? How do you classify dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic shock? And eventually, what you have to add are what are the anesthetic implications for the scene. Okay. So today's lecture is short. It's sweet. And we are going to focus on how will we write an answer in paper 4 if we get a question on write a long answer defining dengue and its effects on anesthesia or dengue and its anesthetic implications. Now, as you all can see in this picture, you can see the mosquito that I am showing is nothing but the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And this is the one that is the vector. This is the one that carries the dengue uh, virus in its saliva and transmits it to the humans. All right. Okay, so whenever you have to write first, you can write a general introduction about the dengue virus. So you can say that dengue virus is a single stranded RNA virus. So we commonly write it as SSRNA virus and it belongs to the Flaviviridae family. Okay, now this is an infectious disease, viral disease, which is transmitted through the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. So, there are two types of Aedes mosquito which actually transmit it. One is Aedes aegypti and one is Aedes albopictus. However, the one that we see mostly in our country are the Aedes aegypti mosquito. All right. And then they will ask you about the endemicity or the epidemiology of this disease. So, mostly you will see that mosquitoes are found in tropical countries. Tropical countries are those around the equator. So, like the Asian countries, the Pacific Islands, a uh, little bit of Africa, which is around the tropics. So, all of these places are where you can find dengue fever. All right. So, Southeast Asia, Pacific Islands and Africa. These are the three places you can mention that this is where mainly we find dengue. All right. Now, this is a very basic introduction. But if we have to write more in detail about dengue, then first let's talk about the virus. So, how we will be approaching this is first we will talk about the virus after the virus we will talk about the vector okay then we will talk about how does the vector transmit the disease to the human and once the dengue virus goes inside the human then where does it actually reside where does it multiply and eventually how does the disease begin all right then we will discuss about what are the four types of dengue here, we will discuss about the clinical manifestations of dengue. So, you can have something as basic as just an undifferentiated fever. Like someone who says, I have fever, body ache. And he may just do a blood test and see that he is dengue NS1 positive. Or you may have someone who has gone into complete dengue hemorrhagic shock. So, that is also the other spectrum of the disease. So, what are the clinical variations of dengue? That is what we will see. And also, their management. And finally, what we will focus on is how to, what are the anesthetic implications. So, if you have a patient who has dengue, then what are the things that you will keep in mind in pre-op, intra-op and post-op for this patient. So, this is going to be how you will write the answer also and how we will go through the lecture also. Most of this is theoretical. There is nothing much to explain over here. But whatever are the important points, I will let you know. Okay, so first while talking about the dengue virus, you will say that there are four types of dengue virus. We have D dengue 1, dengue 2, dengue 3 and dengue 4. Okay, in India, we mainly find dengue 1 and dengue 2. And also if they may ask you, suppose you get this in a viva and the examiner asks you that which is the one which mostly causes dengue hemorrhagic shock. So the one that causes dengue hemorrhagic shock is mostly dengue virus. Okay, now a person can get infected with any one of these serotypes and once he gets infected with any one of these serotypes, he has lifelong immunity against that. Okay, what does this mean? For example, if I get uh, dengue and, uh, I, uh, and the serotype that has caused the dengue in me is deng dengue 1. 
then for the rest of my life, I cannot get affected by dengue one. I have lifelong immunity against it. But I can, after a few years, get dengue again with another serotype like dengue two, three or four. Now, this type of infection is very, very uh, severe. The second infection that happens after you have already been afflicted with dengue once. And this is the one that mostly leads to severe stages like dengue hemorrhagic shock. All right. Okay. Then let's go to, we have talked about the virus. So what is the vector that carries it? So as we discussed, the vector that carries it is through mosquito. Which mosquitoes? The mosquitoes belong to the Aedes group and which Aedes group? So as we discussed, there are two Aedes mosquitoes that transmitted are Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. Okay, out of this, even if you remember Aedes aegypti, it's fine because that's the one in India. All right. Now, where do you find these mosquitoes? So, you can write that these mosquitoes are usually daytime mosquitoes. That is something that you have to remember. These mosquitoes don't uh, bite in the night. Okay, like for malaria, your anophilus will bite usually in the night. But Aedes will bite usually during the day. Okay. Now, where do you find these mosquitoes? If you have any breeding water, like if there is stagnant water or if you take a vessel and you keep water in it, you know, like how in villages people don't get 24 hour water supply. So, they store water in vessels and keep and they keep it outside. So, usually the larvae of the mosquito, they will breed in these small, small uh, breeding places where there is stagnant water or suppose you have a, uh, it's, it's rains and there are dirty uh, puddles of water on the road, then in these puddles, you will have Aedes growing. Okay, so these are the sites of larvae development. All right, then let's talk a little bit about the vector. So, Aedes aegypti female mosquito is the one that will carry the dengue virus. And as I told you before, that it is a daytime feeder. Okay, so it actually bites during the daytime. Where does it lay its eggs? Where does it grow its larvae? It grows it in artificial containers which contain stagnant water. Okay. And if you see how to identify it, you will see that this has stripes like a tiger. Okay. So you can see these are called as tiger stripes that you can see these white, white stripes that are present on the mosquito. Okay. And what are the associated diseases with Aedes aegypti? Now, this is not dengue, is not the only disease that it will transmit. It will also transmit yellow fever, filaria, chikungunya and rift valley fever. Okay, so all in all, this is one mosquito that you definitely don't want around your house because you can get any of these uh, quite severe uh, viral diseases. And uh, as you all know that uh, this is the season when we are having a lot of chikungunya and dengue in uh, India right now. So everyone be careful. Uh, if you see any kind of artificial containers where the breeding water is kept then make sure that it is thrown away and you don't uh, and you let your or if you see puddles on the road let your uh, municipal corporation know to take care of all this especially if you have a lot of cases of dengue and chikungunya around okay now how